Welcome to Juniper Learning Bytes. My name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer in the Education Services Department of Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the building and deploying VLAN profiles in Network Director Learning Byte. So first, let's discuss what uh, profiles are. Uh, profiles are a simple way to manage and deploy features. Now what does that mean? That means features on the managed devices itself because Network Director will discover devices such as EX series switches, QFabric systems, uh, wireless uh, devices like uh, wireless LAN controllers and access points. And uh, then we can deploy features such as VLANs, uh, port configuration, things like that. And so the uh, profiles are built in build mode and deployed in deploy mode and then manage devices configuration must be in sync and what does that mean well there are three repositories there there is the repository the configuration repository uh, that's on the device itself which is just the devices configuration then there's a configuration repository uh, or a copy of the configuration in on the uh, network uh, management platform itself in Juno space and then there is the network director uh, the information it has in configuration profiles because what, what happens is network director when it discovers a device it imports whatever configuration is on that device such as VLANs into profiles so any VLANs that were on an EX switch would be imported into network director as a VLAN profile so all three of those repositories must match for a device to be in sync so let's jump to the network director GUI to have a closer look at network director all right, here is the network director GUI. As you can see, we uh, currently have one EX2200 switch in the uh, that's being managed right now. It's currently in sync, so that means we can deploy configuration or we can deploy profiles to it. So you can see we're in build mode right now, and we have to go to the profile and configuration management workspace and then go to the VLAN workspace to begin building a VLAN profile. Now that we're there, we can click the add button. And then we're presented with the device family chooser uh, window. And, uh, you know, we know it's an EX switch. So you would assume that we would want to click the first option, but we do have some other options. Let's go through those. Wireless, WLC is about wireless LAN controllers. We know that's not what we have. Then we do have campus switching, ELS, and data center switching, non-ELS. Uh, now it's a little fuzzy, actually, which, which one we want to pick. Well, Campus uh, switching ELS is uh, the ELS part stands for the uh, Enhanced Layer 2 Switching, and that's the uh, the EX9200 series. And there might be another series out there. I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head, but uh, our current device is, does not have Enhanced Layer 2 Switching, being an EX2200. And then data center switching non ELS, that's about uh, a Q Fabric systems. We know we don't have that. So, by process of elimination, we know that we can select the switching EX uh, device family. Okay, now we can uh, we get to the basic settings for the VLAN profile. We can uh, configure the VLAN name. We'll just say my VLAN profile. And then VLAN name, let's say V10 V100. Now the My VLAN Profile name is only specific to Network Director. The, the managed device will not know that. The VLAN name is the actual name of the VLAN that will be put into the CLI for the managed device. So Network Director and the managed device will know about that. Uh, we'll skip the description for now. And we'll set a range of 10 to 100. Click Next to continue. Now we have the advanced settings that we could specify some MAC limits, MAC aging time, and also some L2 uh, filters if necessary. And then we could also, if we wanted to, configure some uh, uh, VLAN or some L3, v some IP address. That, that's if we have an IP address configured on the VLAN, but some routing features, but we don't have that. And then we could also configure some VLAN security figures. Uh, parameters, VLAN security settings if necessary. 
but we really don't need to do that right now. We're just going to deploy a VLAN that is very basic, that has a VLAN range of 10 to 100. And here we can actually edit, we can review and edit anything that we have. Simply by clicking the edit button. Uh, but, you know, if there's something wrong after we finish here, we could also go back and edit it. So it's not set in stone at this point, but eh, we're just configuring VLANs 10 through 100. So we can click finish. And we can see the assignment state is unassigned. So let's go ahead and assign that. Oh, need to select the profile first, of course. And we can just select the whole network. We just have the one switch in there. And then we select the device we want to assign it to, which is the EX1 device. Then we can review that assignment. It's pretty basic right now. Now we can uh, uh, finish the assignment. We're presented with a window that lets us know that that assignment's successful. That's good. And then we can see the assignment state is pending deployment. That means we can move on to deploy mode. But before we do that, let's, let's take a quick look at the device inventory. You can see that the device is in sync. That's a good sign. But what happens if somebody were to go behind us and make a change to the actual configuration on the EX1? So let's jump into the CLI, make a configuration change. We're just going to set up an interface. Giggy Ford Unit 0 Ethernet, or excuse me, Family Ethernet Switching. We're going to commit that. All right, now that, that commit is complete, we can go back to the GUI and look here. The device is in the out of sync configuration state. That's not good. Because that means the, uh, the device assignment has disappeared and we have to go resynchronize that uh, device configuration. So we can do that by jumping to deploy mode. Go to device management, click the resynchronize device. You know, we can see in the deploying configuration state here that it's out of sync. And that's a problem because we can't deploy it while it's out of sync, even though it's got a pending configuration. So let's resync the device configuration. Select EX1, click the resynchronize configuration button. And we can see we were able to resynchronize the device. It's no longer in this window, so we go back to the deploy configuration changes, and there's no devices that are deploying are, are ready for deployment. And the reason behind that is by doing that, resynchronizing a configuration and putting it back in sync, it removes any sort of device assignments. So we need to go back to uh, the VLAN profiles and redo that assignment. That's why it's important to, you know, I would suggest not having, uh, you know, not having more than one <laughs> place where you're configuring. If you're going to configure these devices, manage it through the uh, network director. Uh, only do it through network director. Don't go back behind it through the CLI. You're going to create problems like this. So we just reassigned it. We can see that the uh, it's pending deployment again. So now we can go to deploy mode and uh, deploy uh, configuration changes is selected by default. We are in sync. We can actually deploy it now. So let's select the EX1 device, click the deploy now button. We're presented with, a, with an option to, ch to set the name for the job. We'll just click OK for that. And the deployment job starts and we'll get a, we'll get a progress as it actually deploys. And you know, it's currently 0%. It's actually in progress as a deployment state. Okay, now we can see that it has been successful. It's completed 100%. Now, if we were deploying a VLAN profile to, say, a thousand devices, and one of them, it didn't work on that one device for whatever reason, the device would actually show as a failure in the, in the deployment status field, even though all the other devices. So keep in mind that even though you might, uh, it might show failure, it might not be a complete failure. You may not have to go and troubleshoot all the problems. And if it was a failure, we could click on the, results here and it would actually give us the information on what why it failed even though you know this is a successful job so we're not going to have that information because it was good then we can view the configuration you know it starts off in the uh, XML view we can switch to CLI, CLI view see what happened and uh, we had some configuration changes everything looks good we're going to close this then let's jump to the CLI to see uh, see those changes on the see the VLAN on the device itself. Okay, here's the CLI. 
we can see the VLAN was deployed to the to the uh, device we do have a configuration there so everything looks good this is how it should be so this brings us to the end of the building and deploying VLAN profiles and network director learning bytes you know we talked about how to build a VLAN or we built a VLAN we assigned the profile we had to resynchronize the device's configuration with network director and then we deployed that profile and verified that the configuration actually made it to their device and so that brings us to the, the end of the learning bytes uh, Hopefully what you learned today will be helpful for you, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.